might seem that way, but the truth is most people, including you, have been learning and learning about learning in the wrong way. That is why you'll forget most of the things you're spending so much energy on learning. It's harsh, but it's a fact. The most common and accepted study strategies are highly ineffective and result in a lot of wasted effort. You know it. You know how it's like. You think you've nailed down a study system that is functional. Taking extensive notes, highlighting like there's no tomorrow, and spending hours studying for exams. Everyone probably thinks you're the perfect student because your grades are fine. But deep down you know the results you're getting do not match the time and effort you put in it. The problem is like most students, you haven't really been taught how to study in an efficient and sustainable manner. Don't focus on the wrong things throughout your academic life and beyond. The most important meta skill you can learn is to learn. Developing optimal learning and studying habits is the single most significant thing you can take away from your university career because they will serve you for the rest of your life. It is time to become a smarter learner. Now, what does that mean? You've probably heard the expression work smarter, not harder. Have you ever wondered how that applies to learning? You already know that learning is hard work, but did you know that the more effort you put into retrieving the things you learn, the better you will learn and retain them over time? It sounds like more work and you're probably shaking your head saying you cannot possibly be smarter about the material you have to study. But we can become smarter learners. We can use how our brain works to our advantage instead of working against it. That is exactly what this module is focused on. By adopting research-based techniques such as active recall and spaced repetition and developing certain habits, you can train yourself and your brain to hold on to things that are worth remembering. After all, what's the point of all your efforts if you cannot retain them like 10 or 15 years down the road? This module will help you get a better understanding of these tools and will enable you to become a smart learner. Let's get one thing right. We need to work with our brains, not against them. We need to understand our cognitive constraints to work around them. Unlike computers, and contrary to what we might imagine, our brains do not store information in a single location, but rather scatter it across different areas and our brains can retain very limited new information at any given time. Our brains are designed to think and automatically hold on to what's important, which is what we remember. So it all comes down to training our brains to prioritize information. These simple facts alone make rereading, highlighting, summarizing and making notes the least efficient learning and revision strategies out there. If that's all you've been doing, don't panic. There are things you can do right now to change things for the better. Almost everyone has inefficient routines for learning. In fact, you've probably come this far despite your learning and revision techniques and not because of them. That is where active recall comes to the rescue. It is by far the most efficient learning technique that you can add to your arsenal. As the name suggests, active recall has to do with retrieving information from our brains as an activity. This may feel counterintuitive because we have this image that learning is putting things into our brains. But smart learning is more about the ability to retrieve information when it is needed. There are decades of scientific research on this. It is not by trying to put as much information as we can in our brains that we learn better. We actually learn better by training our brains to recall information. To make things even more interesting, learning is deeper and lasts much longer when it is effortful. This means long study nights before exams, also known as cramming, highlighting and rereading texts are among the least effective strategies you can use. Instead, active recall allows you to hack your brain by stimulating it to make stronger connections, making room for optimal learning that is more effortful and at the same time highly efficient and durable. I have a few tips for you. First, make notes with the book closed right after you read a section. The process of making your notes is an important training element of your learning activity. Don't cheat yourself by simply copying from the textbook. This part requires your cognitive effort. Second, 
make mind maps and spider diagrams, summarizing and connecting what you remember. Add to them as you progress and learn more. By the end of it, you will have a visual conceptual reference that works better than pages of notes. Third, write questions for yourself right after you read a section and try to actively answer them from memory. Alternatively, try solving problems on your own, relying on what you remember before you see the solution. Whatever you do, make self-testing an integral part of your study strategy. In its essence, spaced repetition is the opposite of cramming, which is what most students end up doing when faced with a high volume of information. In practice, it goes hand in hand with active recall to create a highly efficient learning and revision system. We can recall concepts and information very quickly as long as we manage to learn them in multiple spaced out sessions at particular intervals while using active recall as a tool. By slowing down the process of forgetting through repetition and resisting the information after we come across it, spaced repetition allows for better overall retention of information. And contrary to cramming, spaced repetition does deliver results that are longer lasting. That is because spaced repetition interrupts the forgetting curve and allows us to commit things to memory for longer, making it possible to even forgo the curve altogether, resulting in near-perfect recall. Most of us already use spaced repetition in one way or another, but we probably don't do it in the most effective way. It is the time intervals between those repetitions that make all the difference. That is because retrieving memories changes the way they are encoded. So the more your brain has to work to retrieve something, the stronger that information is encoded and prioritized. Forgetting and learning are counterintuitively linked. So when we revisit something close to forgetting it, the brain processes new details. On top of that, the brain assigns more importance to repeated information. Simply put, spaced repetition consists of repeated exposure to information in specifically timed intervals. The simple act of spacing out study and practice sessions into shorter ones over longer periods of time with alternating topics strengthens both learning and memory. By allowing enough time to pass between the intervals, we allow ourselves to forget some of the information, making the brain more stimulated the next time we use active recall for revision and in turn making us retain a lot more of the information over time. Here are some tips for using spaced repetition as a smart learner. First, scope your subjects and study in short and focused sessions. For example, 25 minutes. You can use a Pomodoro timer. It is important to have short daily sessions over a period of time with breaks in between them instead of uninterrupted hour-long sessions. Second, make a schedule for information review. Make a spaced repetition spreadsheet or devise your own system to track your progress. You can't let the planning you need to do ahead of time discourage you from using this technique. It might seem time-consuming now, but it will save you a lot of time in the long run. Here, discipline will give you more freedom and peace of mind in the exam sessions. Third, mix it up. Blitz through multiple topics and revise them rather than focusing on one topic for a long time. Again, the Pomodoro technique is very useful here. Fourth, implement spaced repetition as both a daily routine and an overall study strategy. The timing between repetitions depends on the material, but generally sessions should have enough space between them so that the practice does not become a mindless repetition with no real engagement. Remember, the more effortful the information retrieval, the higher your rate of retention over time. Fifth, apply spaced repetition not just to your studies, but to anything else that you want to learn. Treat it like a daily workout, like push-ups or yoga exercises. That is how you can own your learning. Learning is something you do for yourself and your education. Be conscious and critical about what you commit to your memory. Developing a professional approach about these routines is an important step to becoming a smarter learner. 
Mastering these techniques can also help you learn a musical instrument, a new language or physics. 6. Be patient and consistent. Patience and consistency go a long way. You won't get a six-pack after one training and you can't learn yoga in a week. To become a better learner, the journey matters more than the destination. You'll be thankful for efficient learning routines in the future. Flashcards. Now, how can you integrate the principles of vector recall and spaced repetition into your study routines? Make flashcards. Use these to organize a system of questions and answers with adjustable time frames for repeating the information based on the level of difficulty you assign them. You can choose to go over the information in hours, days, weeks or months. As you progress and revise cards within set intervals, learning and information retention will become much more effective. So while the initial setup and information input might take you a while, you'll have much better results over time. Of course, there are several digital options to supercharge your learning routines. I will give you a few links and recommendations below. With such tools, you can effectively organize your notes, easily make flashcards and getting the best of spaced repetition algorithms working for you while you are linking different topics together and broaden your horizons. By now you know that recalling information from our brains is what matters most for learning. It matters more than trying to force a lot of information in. Engaging in cognitive effort and true learning are not passive concepts. In the most efficient form, learning and remembering are activities that are more efficient with effort. This means that our retention and understanding improve over time the more brain power it takes to recall our knowledge. Active recall, together with spaced repetition, are the most efficient, scientifically backed methods for learning and revision. By understanding and incorporating these simple techniques, you can not only improve your overall performance drastically, but you can also learn and retain a lot more information and remember them for years to come. So, what are you waiting for? Put down your books and highlighters right now and start asking yourself questions about the things you've learned in this module. It's time to start developing better learning habits that will last your lifetime instead of focusing on acing your next exam.